Okay, this is a, the problem solving video uh, for problem 2.14. Uh, if you notice the circuit there, we're asked to find Ix and I1. You'll see that Ix and I1 are labeled on the diagram. Um, and the way we'll approach this problem is we will use Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law to find the value of Ix. Okay, if we look at the problem, we can see where there are connections for that circuit. And if we really know there are three nodes in this circuit, and what we'll do is let's use Kirchhoff's laws to go through and come up with the value of Ix. So, for instance, let's apply Kirchhoff's current law at that node. And the way we'll do this is I'm going to sum the currents leaving that node and set it equal to sum of currents entering that node. So if we look at the currents leaving that node, we have the current I1 and the current Ix leaving. Okay, And that's going to be equal to the current entering, which is 6 milliamps. Now... Uh, we still need to get another equation. Let's apply Kirchhoff's current law at that node. And again, uh, we'll uh, sum currents entering and set it to equal to sum of currents leaving. If we do that, we'll have I1 is equal to 1.5 Ix plus 1 milliamp. Okay, now, we have two equations and two unknowns, so now what we need to do to solve is uh, plug in, so we can take this, plug into here, then we'll have one equation in Ix, so if we do that substitution, we'll have 1.5 Ix plus 1 milliamp plus Ix equal to 6 milliamps. Now we have one equation and one unknown, so we have 2.5 Ix equal to 5 milliamps, and therefore Ix has to be 2 milliamps. Okay, so there's the, the value of Ix. Now, for I1, we can now substitute this back into this equation. So I1 then is 1.5 times 2 milliamps plus 1 milliamp, and that's going to give us a value of 4 milliamps.